four, three, two, and one. We are live, and someone please say something in the YouTube chat so I could verify that this thing is actually working because hello, hello. it doesn't look oh, well. like it is. Oh, wait, refresh. Is it actually working? Come on. All right. Refresh. Yes, we have Meat Cat saying something. Thank God it actually works. All right. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, question and answer. Yes, sir. Question and answer here. Episode 24. Dope. And then the uh, format, folks, as you are all aware, we have Patreon questions, and then we have Super Chats, and then we have uh, uh, Discord questions, and then YouTube questions, if we get to them at the uh, very end. So... And we're probably going to go for 1.5 to 2 hours uh, this evening. So yeah, there's our format, and uh, we're sticking to it with our uh, absolutely uh, terrible, um, wow, <laughs> our terrible whiteboard uh, for some reason. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to clear the canvas on that one. So just, uh, yeah. Q and A. 24. Yes. All right. What's up, guys? Fellow mm -hmm. ENTP here says Jerson Sarseno. Is it Hederson Sarseno? Hederson? Hederson? Right? Or like Hederson? Mm -hmm. Or Her. Son? No? My Is that not how it goes? <laughs> yeah. You having fun there? I am having fun. Uh, yeah, I'll stop having fun now. Um, yeah, this is business. All right. Well, Patrick is, is already ready to go with the question, Jeb. Uh, so, but let's get to it. What are the Patreon questions we have this evening? Fire it off. Uh, uh, do you want to make any announcements first? Uh, anything sure. coming out? Sure. Uh, uh, how to... Yeah, that was just like released moments ago. How to social engineer INTJs. That's up. Um, and uh, have fun with that one, folks, because they are unsocial engineerable. And then uh, what else we got going on, Jab? Uh, well, I mean, technically they can be socially engineerable as long as you align their goals with your goals. And then, like, by getting you your goals, they get their goal. But it's like they're kind of benefiting from it as well so it's kind of like cool you know a symbiotic relationship leading to mutual social engineering for the benefit of both parties involved is that what you're saying chap <laughs> effectively yeah because it's like there's no way ni hero is going to like be self-sacrificing towards you it's like not gonna happen sorry if they're yeah not benefiting, if they're not benefiting good luck so yeah, so we've got that video. We've got some articles coming out, I believe. I believe we have an INFP article coming out on the website sometime soon or today. I'm not sure. I'm actually not too familiar with the scheduling for them. But regardless, I think we also have a ESFP one, if that's not already out. But we've got some good articles coming out. Uh, uh, keep an eye on them. If you haven't read any of our old articles, we've had some really, really, really popular articles. We've had an INTJ article, an ENTP... Oh, oh we also have an ENTP article coming out soon. Oh, but yeah, that's, that's right. The stuff. ENTP article. Yeah. Yeah, where, uh, where Jab is going to basically be uh, spilling all of my secrets to uh, the public. Thank you, Jab. Thank you for that yeah, one. Yeah, it's basically a uh, biography of Chase. Yep, a definite total biography of Chase. Yeah, right down to, uh, right down to uh, you know, uh, being like a former arms dealer manufacturer. You know, a little bit of homelessness <laughs> here and there. Uh, learning some Spanish. You know, some uh, some hijinks. Uh, you know, that 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 kind of biography, Mister Jab. 
Yeah, it's basically where I just take everything that has happened in your life and say all ENTPs are like this. I do need glasses. I need glasses that filter out blue light because blue light is cancer. <laughs> all right. First question, Jab. Lay it on me. All right. We're good to go. First question. Um, so with the Platinum Q&A, we actually don't have anything in the Platinum section. Oh, that's wow. odd. Wow. All right. Well, maybe one of them will uh, fill that out for us uh, very soon, hopefully. All right. so but that's okay. More regular... questions for the audience then, I guess. R regular Patreon. Regular Patreon, yes. <clears throat> All right. First question comes from Ginger Assassin. All right. And this person asks, what does a fully developed ESTP look like? A fully developed ESTP look like? Uh, well, let's take a look, shall we? We have S-E-T-I-F-E-N-I, -E -E right? And that's their ego, right? And then we have their shadow, which is S-I-T-E-F-I-N-E, -E, and that's like a demon, so watch out for that. Apparently, like... I need glasses because I don't know what I'm doing here. So, but yeah. Uh, so fully developed. Um, Expert Sensing Hero is all about having shared experiences, right? And they also can like detect, uh, especially like from an ESTP standpoint, they can detect, you know, weakness and that could be an issue, right? So just something to be aware of in that uh, regard. Um, Let's actually erase some of this stuff here. It gives a little bit more room to work with. Ooh, redo that, no, and then get some red pen going on. Uh, so what is the purpose of the ESTP? Well, it really comes down to their, um, their INFJ subconscious. So that's what this is here in red, their INFJ subconscious. Uh, so, uh, because they exist to make people better, right? So the ESTP, they need to cause like other people to improve in some capacity. And usually they do this from the point of view of strength. Now, an immature underdeveloped ESTP would think that, oh, you know, if I just go, if I'm going to like literally beat you, uh, then that means you're gonna get stronger, right? Well, that's not exactly accurate. That's not, <laughs> not exactly accurate like one bit. Um, reality is, it's that it's having shared experiences with people that actually lead to strength. So they need that, uh, that SE hero to get in there, but they also need to do it from like a caring point of view. Now it's interesting because a lot of people often assume that ESTPs are not caring, but because they have FE child, this is what actually makes them super, super caring. A lot of people don't understand that. So telling an ESTP that they're uncaring is like the equivalent of child abuse. So don't do that, right? Uh, the one problem with the ESTPs though is that that NI right here, well, they just have like no clue what they want. Um, and that can be a problem. So how do you deal with this? Well, what you do is you watch season 16, episode four, uh, just check the playlist here and uh, then you won't have that issue, right? So uh, it explains strictly, you know, how, you know, people's uh, inferior function works and where it comes from, how it manifests, etc., and why it's important to actually like have something to do with that, right? Well, it is because an un underdeveloped inferior function is a consistent problem. The inferior function needs to be developed because if you don't do that, you're going to get midlife crisis, right? So a developed ESTP is someone who has developed introvert intuition and they do this through aspiration. Aspiration. So when they're aspiring with NI, they actually do know what they want, right? So, and uh, and then they they can become singularly focused. See, that's the problem with ESTPs. They have a real hard time focusing, much to the chagrin of other people, because people often assume that that means that like they have. ADD when in reality is they don't that's actually a lie so just something for you folks to be aware of so all right let's let's uh, get to the next question mr. Jab <clears throat> all right next question other than SI relating to memory and comfort what else is SI and how does SI DOM differ from NI DOM okay yeah let's actually define introverted sensing right now SI equals introverted sensing. 
And introverted sensing is described, like if we're gonna like pretend that C.S. Joseph right now is literally a thesaurus, let's actually define that, okay? So self-discipline. Self-discipline is a big thing. Self-discipline is all about like uh, knowing one's duty, uh, doing what they should do as opposed to what they want to do. Um, it's all about should, it has nothing to do with like want. Uh, someone who's an SI user wants to be told what they should do, wants to be told what their duty is to do, and that they will reach success if they complete that task instead of them actually like wanting to do it. it has nothing to do with want or desire. Although SI can seek uh, slash desire uh, new experiences, uh, new, uh, let's see, um, tastes, for example, uh, because introverted sensing is like how people sense things internally and whatnot, but it's not shared experiences, which is uh, relating to in or extroverted sensing. It's not shared experiences. So just something to be aware of uh, in that regard. So, but yeah, like it's discipline, duty, what they should do. It's also long-term memory. Long-term memory is also very important with introverted sensing. Uh, so extroverted sensing is short-term memory, introverted sensing is long-term memory, right? So what does that mean? It's not that you have more long-term memory, short-term memory, you have the same amount, right? It's just that what your brain or your mind is able to access, right? And introverted sensors prefer to have long-term memory access uh, while sacrificing short-term memory. That's why, let's say you were a cop and you're investigating a murder, right? And you have a witness, right? If they're an introverted sensor, you should interview them a week later instead of immediately right after it happened because the introverted sensor is gonna remember more about what happened and be able to provide more information a week later as it gets longer or within their uh, long-term memory, right? Uh, whereas if it's short-term, they're actually gonna remember less and then it's going to actually conflict their, uh, uh, their story, et cetera, which, in which case the, um, you know, the prosecution or the defense is not going to take what that witness says correctly because it's like, well, they changed their story because they were interviewed at two different times and the SI user was set up for failure in that regard. If they're an S user, it wouldn't be a problem, right? So just something, uh, just something to be aware of. But remember, it's, it's really someone's source of self-discipline. It's all about uh, their sense of duty, what they should do. Um, it also makes them very enduring. They can endure and outlast just about anything, right? They could definitely outlast, outlast NI users because NI users burn out because NI is all about fire, whereas SI is all about earth and earth always persists and beats fire every time. It's like, uh, it's like uh, uh, rock, paper, scissors to, to, an, to a degree. So, all right, next question. All right, next question. If FI is all about mood, what does that mean for types with FI trickster and demon? Okay, yeah, so FI, which is moral awareness, and they, pe they make decisions based on uh, standards, principles, rules, etc. cetera. Um, moral standards basically, uh, good, bad. Everything is about good, bad, whereas TI equals true, false. Uh, FI is, is good, bad, right? Um, so FI demon or slash trickster, which basically is all TPs, right? All TPs have FI Demon and Trickster. Uh, they make decisions based on what's true, false. They do not make decisions based on what's a good or a bad thing. They just don't. Good or bad is like not really a priority to them. It's like really low priority. Uh, as a result, uh, because FI is uniquely attached to, uh, you guessed it, uh, TE, TE is all about like a person's reputation and whatnot, which means if someone's reputation takes a hit, the FI user feels bad, right? They just feel bad about themselves. It's like they, they feel worse about themselves. They, they always wanna feel good about themselves because their status and how they feel about themselves and how they value themselves because FI is all about personal values or value systems, right? 
because guess what? Principles and standards are value systems at the end of the day, right? Because of that, the FI user is attached to TE in their reputation, also known as their status. Status is important. That's why to typical TE users, they wanna drive the fancier cars all the time. The TI users just don't really care that much. You know what I'm saying? And then it's funny the TE users point out to the TI users, it's like, well, you know, you, it's, you should be like, it's, it's kind of like this. It's like uh, impracticality you know, versus um, practicality. Whereas the TI approach is more of, you know, that's more practical, I'll go for it. But the FI is like, well, I need to care about my reputation and my status. People will think differently. They'll think better of me if I show up in a nicer car and that's gonna make me feel good about myself. So I'm going to sacrifice the practicality for the impractical for the sake of having a higher status, a better reputation, etc. right? So based on that, FI Demon, FI Trickster, because guess what? FI is also about mood. Mood is inclusive with all of these things right here. All those things right here. Mood is inclusive with all of those things, value systems and whatnot. FI users are like, well, I'm not in the mood, so I'm not gonna do it. And it's all about like what their mood is, right? Their mood is so much more important. This is especially important for FI heroes and FI child because it's an optimistic function. And because it's an optimistic function, they make decisions with their mood more often. Whereas a TIFE user, we don't make decisions based on our mood. We just don't. Mood does not mean anything to us. So if someone's around you being like, oh, I'm not in the mood for that right now. Well, if they actually say the word mood, chances are they're likely an FI user, right? And that's how it comes off. Whereas the TIFE user, they're not gonna, they, they just don't care. They don't make decisions based on what their mood is. Like they actually do have a mood. They just don't care what their mood is. Right. That's the difference. They just don't care. Like it's not important to them. Whereas so, to an FI user, mood is important. Would, would, would someone saying I'm not in the mood, would that also include someone saying I don't feel like it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Not in the mood equals I don't feel like it. <laughs> and it, guess what? Those are FI statements. There you mm -hmm. go. That's right. Yeah, All right. Well. Next question. All right. Next question. How do I help an INFP friend establish more friendships? I'm an ENFJ. Thanks for the help. Uh, I'll, I'll write down the answer right here. That's right, folks. You force them to have friends. <laughs> you force them to have against friends. Against their will. Literally against their will. Uh, so what you do is you just be an ENFJ and introduce every person to the INFP. <laughs> kind of like shotgun weddings, but shotgun friendships. It's literally, yeah, shotgun friendships or, or, or the ENFJ shock and awe approach of, of relationships. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yep. You literally <laughs> obligate that you literally obligate, you obligate the INFP into having friends. And you tell them that uh, if they don't have friends, then well, guess what? Shame on you. You start ringing the shame bell. Shame. 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 Uh, yep. Just like reason, Cersei I've Lannister. I've got shame keys, not a shame bell, but they'll do for now. Shame. That's right. Yep. We too can be Cersei Lannister walking naked down the street. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the, we only have a couple of Q and A questions left, but there's some people who've already asked a question today, so we'll go, come back to those later. We'll go into Discord for now. And All in right. the meantime, if we get any super chats, they'll take priority. So, uh, um, where are we up to? Um, how do you tell? Oh, wait, have we already done that? 
Maybe, I don't know. How do you tell which quadrant your children are in? For example, INTP plus INFP. To three totally different goals. That sounds familiar. Have we already done that one? I think we did do that one, yes. Um, at what age can you identify your child's type? I think we did that also. I'm just going to move some way down, pick a question, and then we'll just go from there. And if we miss any, sorry. PM to, PM to, PM them to me if I missed any. And uh, so I'll start with this one. Hi, Chase and Jab. <clears throat> Suggest an ESFP character in a movie or anime which you used as any demon. Which character? ESTP? Uh, it's asking, this person is asking us to suggest an ESFP character which, use, which is using any demon. An ESFP character using any demon? I have no idea. I know an ESTP character, and that would be Guts in Berserk. Wow, can't even spell to save my life. That would be uh, what I would say, but he's an ESTP, not an ESFP. I don't really watch anime that much to uh, know for sure. Next question. Okay. Well, I'm going to just go to a plethora of me because apparently she's a patron, and I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure she is a patron. So I'm just going to go with the question she put in uh, YouTube really quickly. <coughs> Hold on, I got a question. I got a question. How to make SI comfortable? Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Oh, okay. All right, so that's pretty easily done. Uh. What about, like, you can make SI comfortable in the following ways. You could do it through food. You could oh do my. it through clothing and dressing nice and soft. Uh, soft Smell. is good. Uh, smelling good. Mm -mm -mm. Smelling good. Um, uh, temperature in the room. Um, folding clothes. Dishes. Mm -hmm. Order. Um, yeah, order is nice. Um, also, uh, making the bed. Every night. Every night. For Are you example, being informative to me, Chase? I am not being informative to you, Jab. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe I am. Alright. Yeah, that's how I'd answer that question. Cool. Next. Alright, next question. Um Do you have any books ESFPs must read? The only books ESFPs must read? Uh there's a ton of them, like how to win friends. <laughs> that would be a good one. Uh Twelve Rules for Life. Um mm -hmm. uh, Crush It. Mm -hmm. no slash nice guy? crushing it mm -hmm. uh, yeah no more Mr. Nice Guy uh, there's also uh, what was that other was that other book no more Mr. Nice Guy crush it crushing it um, uh, you could also read 10x by Grant Cardone uh Lean startup. Uh, basically, I mean, you could watch anime and learn about the Japanese take on the power of friendship, and I'm sure that would be an excellent read for you. Um, but uh, no, <laughs> that's what I would recommend. At least, uh, if you don't know, go to like the book section on our website, csjoseph.life. Click books, and then just see all the books available, and just read all of them. A really great book, actually, to read is this book. Trust me, I'm lying. And that's by Ryan Holiday. Everyone needs to read that book. And another book that you can also read is uh, 
Another book is, uh, let's see, um, So You Have Been Publicly Shamed. It's also an excellent uh, book as well. And that is available on Audible only. It's a pretty rough right. book. I recommend it. It talks about Ralph Nader and him getting like taken advantage of by uh, prostitutes uh, that were hired by General Motors to give them an edge in a court case. Pretty awesome. Check it out. Wow. So. All right. Differences between SE and FE Trickster. They seem of kind of similar. They're not. Uh, they're not similar. Uh, but we'll definitely take a look. So, we have SE Trickster, mm -hmm. and then we have FE Trickster. All right. What does FE Trickster do? Well, they break social rules. Um, they commit social faux pas all the time. Faux pas. Can't even spell correctly. Uh, SE Trickster. Um, mm -hmm. They destroy the physical environment. Uh, They're tripping over stuff. Trip, tripping, dropping. Uh, They're the kind make, of people who warp screws when trying to screw them in. And Make others, yes. Make <laughs> others uncomfortable. Uh, make others uncomfortable. Um, lots of lint on their clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of have a dandruff issue as well. I've seen that. It's very common for SE tricksters. Um, um, not aware of how others feel mm -hmm. and that is for Effie trickster so that's 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 the difference right there those are the difference uh tanya i'd appreciate you getting on discord if possible uh in the future uh, it would make this a little bit easier on us uh please uh get with uh, somebody so we can get you on to uh, discord to make it easier for you so yeah all right mr jab what's next all right, next. Um, what is the INTJ seduction style? What is the what? INTJ seduction style. Oh, yes, the INTJ seduction style. That's a great question. I'll give you a clue. It involves lots of singing. In fact, it's why I sing to Chase all the time. Yes, he does sing to me all the time, like on a regular <laughs> basis. Yes. And I what have to be, I say and I literally, welcome. I literally have to be Odysseus because Odysseus, guess what, folks, is an ENTP, you know, and I literally have to be Odysseus, and uh, you know, I got my, I got my little boat right here, you know, here's my, here's my terrible boat. Sorry. Yeah, don't you like Chase is constantly tying himself down to the mast, just so that he doesn't constantly, know. and then here I am as Odysseus, you know. <laughs> tied to the mast here you know like like literally tied to the mast and then here's this like little little island over here of these uh things that are singing you know and whatnot and uh they're like oh so beautiful and they make such good sound you know what i'm saying <laughs> such good sound such wow good sound. this is like terrible <laughs> But yes, the siren. The siren is the seductive style. The siren is the INTJ seduction style, whereas the ENTP seduction style is known as the coquette. Yep. The problem with the siren is that the siren has a huge disadvantage, has a lot of advantages in the youth because physical beauty fades over time and they cannot make great use of that seduction style as the siren for long. It is not permanent. They can work really hard to make sure it's as permanent as possible so that when compared to other people their age, they are able to maintain their physical attractiveness. Whereas coquetry, however, well, folks, that just lasts forever. So <laughs> this is why Robert Greene says <laughs> coquetry is actually a stronger, if not the strongest seductive style out of all of the uh, seduction styles in his book, The Art of Seduction. Yes, Jab is a siren. That's correct, Killer Mike. Jab is, absolutely, absolutely. 
That's where my voice box came from. It was forged in the seas of uh, Atlantis. Yeah, and because Tanya continues to like to use YouTube chat for her questions instead of actually putting them on Discord, I will answer the ESFP seduction style as well. And it is... Take a guess, Jab. What is it? The ESFP? Yep. Oh! What is it? Does Jab know the answer, ladies and gentlemen? Does he know? Does he know? Does he know? The Jester. <laughs> Great. No, no. It is the Dandy. The Dandy? The Dandy. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Absolutely I, the Dandy. I couldn't, I couldn't have guessed that one even if I tried. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's the Dandy. All right. Next question, Mr. Jab. All right. Next question is... How to know if an INFP is in their shadow? What can be done to bring them to their ego? What helps? What doesn't? All right. Well, let's take a look, shall we? INFP, ESTJ, ENFJ, ISTP. All right. So like, what happens when they're stuck in this area and you want to get them up here? Well, pretty easy actually. All you have to do is make them, you guessed it, feel good about themselves and make them feel wanted and make them feel comfy and tell them that their social status is so good that people think so highly of them and just kind of fluff them up a little bit, guys. Fluff up, got, never not, like seriously, never not fluff up your INFP. They love getting fluffed. They just need a little bit extra fluff. Don't you think so, Mr. Jab? I mean, yeah. you, you know, you fluffing stuff. You just gotta fluff them, you know what I'm saying? All you have to do to an INFP is tell them that they're incredibly cute or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, that works, that works great. <gasps> Oh, oh yeah, I'm incredibly so cute. cute. Yeah, that that works so good. That works so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, by the way, if you guys don't know, like, also tell uh, them they're a good person. Yeah, tell them they're a good person. You know. <laughs> yep. There you go. Good person. Oh my god, you're so moral, and you have such a good heart, and you make me so happy, and you're so cute all the time. Wow. Wow, Jab. I mean, nice. It's nice Sorry. that I don't. I don't have to be the dick tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now, why are they? Why are they in their ENFJ shadow to begin with? Well, it's pretty easy. It's because they're worried about whether or not other people value them. Uh, it's because they're like they don't allow themselves to do like anything that they want to do, and uh, they're just not aware of what other people are doing. And it's like, well, no one's listening to me. No one's going to listen to me. No one cares about like what, what uh, you know, how I feel or anything. So we're just going to do what I think from now on, and that activates the super ego, which is not ideal. So, right. but yeah, uh, always fluff, always fluff your INFP, and your INFP will get out of their shadow and back in their ego because you know oh, those I'm NFPs love fluff. And they have TE and Furious, so make sure you use logic to provide examples as to why they're a good person. Yes. Logical oh, proof. Time. Proof that the INFP is a good person. Remember that time we were walking in the city and you saw that homeless person and then you, you know you bought them dinner and they were like so thankful. Like, you made that person's day because you're such a good person. Something like that. That's right, folks, because Keanu Reeves always needs to be you know fluffed <laughs> so yeah fluff them well <laughs> all right next question all right next question um do mental illnesses change your personality uh kind of but not really there's not really very much evidence about that actually now, if you want to talk about the KGB, the KGB uh, did research where they tortured uh, people um, in, 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 to attempt to get 12 different personas extracted uh, as a result of torturing people. 
Um, and a lot of people maintain that uh, this research that the KGB had, I don't know if this is true or not, uh, it's just rumor, so take this with much grains of salt, that somehow some of that research spilled into socionics. We're not really sure if that's actually true or false. Um, so, uh, and then other people have claimed that those KGB experiments into psychological archetypes also contributed to a project known as MK Ultra. Uh, so if you don't know what that is, I recommend looking that up sometime. Um, and I think like supposedly Bill Clinton like apologized for that, or maybe that's just a rumor. At least that's what people do when they try to debate me on that topic. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, that's, uh, that's not the point. So anyway, next question. All right. Um... When I speak different languages, I act differently. Why is that? Or do languages affect your personality? Languages absolutely affect your personality. And the best film that explains this is Arrival. It's also like the best film in the world to understand NE, AKA metaphysics and uh, extroverted intuition. Of course, if you bring like an STP person to that movie, they will like instantly like be upset and uh, they'll probably like, you know, I mean, here's here's like some some arm thing, you know, right here. It's like, you know, and they get all muscly arm and whatnot, and they get all upset, you know. Uh, but that was probably not the best STP way of explaining things. To do that properly, you have to draw an S, and then a more different S, you know, and then uh, you know you get yourself like your own cheapo Trogdor, uh, you know, the the Burninator, right? So it complete with like the arm coming out the back, you know what I'm saying? And his little legs and, uh, and then uh, we're breathing fire here, but that's how like an ESTP would react to, the, to a movie known as Arrival. So watch out for that one uh, there as well. So, wow, this is actually pretty fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, Arrival uh, and explains how languages actually do change your cognition in various ways and it can help you fluidically move through and transition through your other um, your other sides of your mind actually and it can actually help you reach uh, enlightenment faster through uh, cognitive development language studies actually do that so but yeah okay next question um if a human were to live f to get some mutation and live forever 10,000 years, what type is least likely to go mad for living hundreds of lifetimes, if at all? Say again? So what this person saying, if humans live for 10,000 years, which type would be least likely to go mad for living hundreds of lifetimes? Oh. Probably the ENFJ, I'd say. Probably the ENFJ. Because Why? of that SI trickster, man. Forgetting things. Yep. SI trickster. Mm -hmm. And they're extroverted, so they don't have, like, it. a lot of that stuff's outside of them, so they're less likely to be corrupted uh, instead of, like, having that SI demon permanently etched from an introverted standpoint if there was, like, an INFJ. So, never not fluff ENFPs. That's, like, a new meme uh, for CSJ. Uh, but what about ENTJs, then? Uh, ENTJs and the NT propensity for uh, being ingenious uh, probably wouldn't, they would not benefit from that. Uh, and and I, they're more likely to go mad than an idealist. Right. I mean, think okay. about it. Mad scientist, right? <clears throat> All right. Um, next question then. What is an INTP's, ENTJ's primary seduction style? What is an INTP's ENTJ? Like, what does that mean? I think it means what's the primary seduction style between an INTP and an ENTJ? <laughs> so, INTP, while they can do coquetry, they're also pretty into being the natural lover. And ENTJs are all about seeking the natural um, because they kind of want to be one with nature because of their ISFP subconscious, right? And uh, that's how I would point that out. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right, and let's go on to the next question then. Um, you know, you're gonna blitz through, uh, through these. We'll try and get a we'll smash out quite a few really quickly. Let's yeah, sure. A, let's do what we can. Double money session. Double money session. Can you elaborate on positivist and negativist functions from socionic from socionics and whether it's a thing? For instance, any plus versus any minus. If it is a thing, would it be restricted to one type, or would it depend on the individual? Yeah, so any plus versus any minus exists, but not in the way that socionics uh, represents. Uh, look at it this way. Uh, you have the hero, you have the parent, um, you have the child, uh, you have the inferior. And let's say uh, that each of these, and then, okay, fine, we'll just do the nemesis as well. Uh, we have the critic, we have the trickster, then the demon, right? Okay. So let's look at it this way. Uh, and let's imagine that all of these are NE, right? All these, this person's soul is literally nothing but NE. They're like walking master of metaphysics, this person, apparently. And because they obviously spontaneously evolved uh, through macroevolution, and that's how they got their chaotically formed uh, uh, once in a lifetime, uh, you know, way of doing things here uh, with their uh, cognition. But the hero is a positive. This is a negative. This is a positive. This is a negative. This is a negative. This is a positive. This is a negative. This is a positive. But that side of the mind and that side of the mind, guess what? This is a positive, but this is a negative, right? So socionics does not exactly quite understand the difference between positive and negative charges between uh, the types. And the reason for that is, is because you have to be aware of optimistic functions versus pessimistic uh, functions. And to find out, you all, all you have to do is go to csjoseph.life uh, or like go to our YouTube channel, go to playlist, for example, and watch all of season one and all of season five, for example, uh, to understand the difference between optimistic versus pessimistic. You can also watch season 16 as well, and it will cover those topics. But yeah. Next question. Next question. Wow, this is a big one. Hey Chase, first of all, thank you. I am an INFP who is studying at a high pressure university and am recovering from severe depression. I find it difficult to consistently be productive with work and so throughout the past few months I have been trying to force myself to be hyper efficient, disregard my feelings and whether I feel comfortable or not and just get SHIT done. However, how can I healthily step into my ESTJ subconscious? Recently, I think I may have chronic fatigue slash burnt out due to forcing myself to disregard my feelings slash comfort, be efficient, and work. Could I possibly be doing something unhealthy by using my ESTJ subconscious like this? Is there any way around this? A psychologically healthy way for an INFP to survive a lot of work, get out of their laziness and comfort zone, and yet still get things done? A week ago, I suffered a severe burnout and couldn't physically do it anymore and decided that I must step my foot off the pedal, returning to my INFP ego. But now, I'm not getting much done at all and I am falling behind. I'm just as you say in your INFP video, lazing around and being idle and afraid to do anything that makes me uncomfortable. Yet forcing myself into my ESTJ subconscious is really stressful and stifling. I just can't force myself anymore. It's killing me. Please help. All right. Whoa, okay. that's, a, that's a handful. It was. Luckily, I listened the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there might be some physical issues, uh, so we're going to talk about those first before we get into the psychological problems. Uh, it's possible this INFP's thyroid is low, um, so they might be developing hypothyroidism. They need to uh, verify whether or not that's actually happening. Um, their circadian rhythm is probably terrible. They need to look up everything on how to do that. Uh, circadian rhythm, I think there is something on um, energy blueprint. Look up energy uh, blueprint. There's like this uh, ENTP guy who uh, is talking about that. Also, you go to fixyourgut.com and learn about circadian rhythm is there. And you can also like check out this guy named Jack Cruz uh, who has some really cool research on circadian rhythm. If you're not maximizing your circadian rhythm, I don't care what type you are, you're not gonna get anything done, let's be honest. Psychologically speaking, 
You need to force yourself to do things you've never done before. You have to force yourself to get out of the comfort zone. Um, and uh, you have to obligate yourself when doing this. Uh, if you're not able to obligate yourself, guess what? Put yourself in a situation that if you do not perform, you will become shamed and people will think less of you. You wanna force yourself in situations, INFPs, where people will think less of you uh, if you do not produce. So anyway, that's how to answer that question. Okay, um, first, uh, allow me to chime in a little bit first. So if you're an INFP, um, first of all, you need someone to reinforce your sense of morals about yourself. Because to an INFP, a sense of whether they're a good person or not, or whether they're doing the right thing is incredibly important to them. And if you have no one reinforcing that for you, or somebody from the outside just acting as a check on you saying, yeah, you're making a mistake here, or hey, you're doing the right thing here, keep going, you're going to drive yourself mad. And right. from what you've described, I don't think you've spoke about that at all. Um... So I think that's an important thing. And INFPs will usually reinforce this by doing some sort of charity. So you cannot go wrong doing some sort of charity. But if you're having trouble with time, nothing stopping you from, you know, giving 20 bucks to uh, AIDS research or something, you know, whatever charity you go for. Yeah, so, definitely. That's a way you can give yourself a bit of a comeuppance, if you know what I mean. Yep. And beyond that, yeah, just you need to motivate yourself and make yourself realize that, you know, you're a good person because if you feel like you're not being a good person, you're going to feel like trash. Next question. What does the veteran warrior archetype look like? Do you have goals beyond your current goals that inspire the endless roster of an ENTP's pursuits and conquests? Does your sorry, Can you translate you see, that for me? What does the veteran warrior archetype look like? Do you have goals beyond your current goals that inspire the endless roster of an ENTP's pursuits and conquest? So he's saying is the veteran warrior archetype have you developed that and what does it look like with you as an ENTP since ENTP? I have ENTP? not developed that, but uh, to get the uh, warrior uh, archetype uh, handled, uh, here's actually what's on my plan. This is Chase's personal plan for developing warrior archetype. So first things first, mastering and teaching Jeet Kune Do, Jeet Kune Do, and which is a form of Kung Fu. It is Bruce Lee's style. Bruce Lee's knee and TP developed it as such. I also take his philosophy very seriously. Um, the philosophy uh, behind uh, the following belief systems. Um, Bruce Lee uh, slash Taoism. Uh, wow, uh, that's a bad M. Uh, another one uh, is uh, Quellism, according mm -hmm. to uh, uh, Kelchrist uh, Falconer. If you don't know who Kelchrist Falconer is, look her up. She's also an ENTP. Kind of interesting how that works. And then also the teachings of um, of Jesus Christ. Uh, although uh, I will have nothing to do with church, and uh, I'm perfectly fine if church burns to the ground. Personally, that's just kind of my my issue with that. I'm not a really church person. I don't really want to have anything to do with church. Um, but I maintain my own spiritual beliefs. Also, uh, um, survival skills uh, after that, uh, which means I will be learning survival skills as a result of practicing through backpacking. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also practicing uh, with uh, Foxfire books. If you guys don't know who the, or what the Foxfire books are, I highly recommend that as well. Uh, but this is just, uh, one uh, one recommendation, uh, or at least how I am going about developing my warrior archetype, and also like add in like uh, hiking in there, uh, rock climbing as well, uh, which is very also very important. 
and audiobooks to d listen to all the while I'm doing all of those things. So, but yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Next question. All right. Um, next question. Hello. I thought I was either an INFJ or an INFP. After listening to online videos, I realize I'm either an INFP or INTP. How can I tell? My best relationships have been with ENTPs and ENTJs, if this helps. All right, here's what you do. You watch the video. How do INTPs compare to INFPs? <laughs> oh, wait, that's not out yet because that's season 10, episode 8. And that's around the corner. But first, we have to get to episode 7, which is, guess what? INJs. And that is the next episode that I'll be filming and that will be coming out very soon. I know tons of people have been asking for it. It is around the corner. Right. <sighs> All right, next question. How does an SE user get stuck in a rut? If SI is likely to get cozy in their little hobbit hole, what does an SE user do? Okay, so what. Here's the situation. S users get stuck in a ruck because they have this problem known as analysis paralysis. Okay, we have analysis paralysis. Why is that? Well, because SE hero or SE parent is too busy looking at what everyone else is doing. And this is also the people when they're talking about drug use. They're the ones that the first people they're always saying, well, everyone else is doing it. Like that is the uh, ultimate SE user excuse. I can do it because everyone else is doing it. I can do it. I want to do it because guess what? Everyone else is doing it. Like that is like the ultimate like uh, SE user excuse. It happens consistently, but yeah. So uh, what that is like a terrible arrow. <laughs> Uh, we don't need to talk about that. Um, so anyway, uh, everyone else is doing it. And Essie just gets caught looking at what all these other little people are doing. You know, here's a little person here, here's a person here. And after I've looked at what everyone else is doing, then I know what I want to do. The problem is, is that NI insecurity can still be there. And do they actually know what they want? No, the answer is no, they don't. So they just keep looking and they get stuck in an analysis process. And there, because of that, it's, um, so, yes. Um, oh yeah, and I would also like to tell the audience the following, GMOs equal cancer. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, next question. At what point in the compatibility scale is it better to start emulating than being yourself? I'd say three or below. Say again. The question was, at what point in the compatibility scale should someone start emulating as opposed to being themselves? And I'd say anywhere from three or below, you're going to need to include some emulation into how you act. Yeah, yeah, three or four or below. But yes, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. Next question. <laughs> you don't want to add any more information? Not really. Not on that one. Fair enough. Um... So we've got a super chat. How do I deal with an INFP group setting who tries to guilt trip, obligate, and interrupt me, INTJ, and my ESTJ friend out of TE heavy conversations? Are we sure that's an INFP doing that and not like an INFJ? Because an INFJ would do that, but an INFP would actually try to like participate in that. I think there might be some mistyping in there. Maybe. Mm. Well, maybe it's a uh, INTP and an ESTP. Yeah, like uh, like like an INFP is not going to like an INFP is not going to interrupt people like that. Why? It's because they're very patient. They remember what they're going to say, so they'll just keep silent and let you keep talking until they can get a word in edgewise. But an INFJ, no. Why not? They have to interrupt consistently. Why do INFJs have to interrupt? Because they forget. 
And because it's like, oh crap, I have this idea right now, but if I don't say it now, I'm gonna forget about it in a few seconds, so I gotta say it now, and that's why they interrupt to begin with. And then they're gonna guilt trip you with FE Parent throughout the entire process. And it's a very TE heavy conversation. Their TE trickster is not engaged because they're all about TI child. And so as a result of that situation, I maintain that he's probably actually talking about an INFJ. Um, so that's a red braided beard. Okay, well, uh, all right, well, I'll answer the question as is. INFPs, assuming an INFP is actually doing that. Um, basically, you have to go to their functions Okay, and you literally have to state the following. Um, I don't think, keyword here is think that engages TE. I don't think this is good. Okay, this engages FI. So you've just hit both their functions by saying, I don't think your behavior is good. Um, and then you could be like, okay, um, I will make you uncomfortable. <laughs> so you I will make you uncomfortable. Yeah, so you can so you mock uh, you, you you mock the INFP. Mock them. Uh, you can also use uh, TE, you can shame them as well, which is really nice. Make shame. them look bad. Make them look bad publicly. Look wow. bad publicly reputation yes. yeah they value their reputation a little too much and that's why they're like super sensitive with their reputation um ne you could state uh i want you have to say the word want because that engages any i want you to stop okay that's like how that works right so yeah that's all the different ways to get an infp to change their behavior when you're hitting their ego specifically so Okay, uh, can you clarify pragmatism versus affiliation and how can an INTJ deal with an ESFP? My brother in particular, he thinks I'm heartless and I don't know what to do with him. Okay. Affiliative. And then pragmatic. Cursive still exists, I promise. All right. Doing the right thing. Doing what works. So, a lot of people claim that this is the meaningful thing. Some people claim that this is the expedient way of doing things. It's actually not, that's really subjective. Um, but yeah. Pragmatic versus affiliative, right guys? So uh, that's basically the difference between the two. You're doing the right thing versus doing what works. Doing what works is not necessarily the right thing. Doing what works means that people's feelings may be hurt in the process. It doesn't matter. Why? Well, because guess what folks? Pragmatic people are independent. And affiliative people are interdependent because guess what guys? When you do everything with a team, Whereas the independent person's like, I'm just gonna do all the schoolwork in the group and you guys can just leave me alone because I'm better at it than the rest of you. Typical INTJ way of doing things. So. Hmm. so what was the rest of that question? So the question was his ESFP brother thinks he's heartless and it affects their relationship. What type is How he? He's an INTJ, his brother's an ESFP. Okay, well, if you're dealing with an ESFP brother, let's look at how to ego hack that ESFP brother, shall we? Um, be like, are you sure you want that? Like call, question, question the desires of the ESFP. Um, you can also make the ESFP look bad as well, um, or make them look stupid in that situation. Um, piss them off at you though? Yeah, it would. Call into question uh, humanity. 
whether or not they're a good person, question their humanity to their face. Um, also, uh, call them out for uh, never getting anything done. Oh my goodness. Yep. It's also a very effective strategy. Um, I don't feel comfortable opening up to you with about my feelings, though. Yeah. Yeah, or like an SE user, like, um, you know, um, be like, never say what you're doing or never give them the opportunity to see what you're doing at all times. Uh, conceal what you're doing. Because by doing that, they don't have any ability to survey what you're doing. Because SE, SE is all about survey. They want to survey everything, right? So you take away their opportunity to survey things. They'll leave you alone because they can't see what you're doing, right? How can an INTJ like turn this into a good positive experience? Well, basically you do the opposite of that, which kind of a hard thing to do. How do you do that? Give your brother choices. Don't make it about your choice. Tell your brother, quote, I think highly of you. <laughs> fluff them up, right? Fluff. Um, hey, Jeff, fluff and stuff. You are a good person. You're such a good person. Yeah. Such great moral. I am loyal to you, right? Those kinds of statements, right? And do all of them at once, and then the ESFP be like, wait a minute, are you my brother? So, it's just basic ego hacking, folks. Next. Next question. Um, what are some foolproof ways on determining the difference between two extroverted intuition heroes, ENTP and ENFP? Okay, yeah, that is easily explained in Season 10, and that episode is already out, so please check that out in the Season 10 playlist. Next question, Jeb. Do FJs develop TI because they often don't know if they're being manipulated, lied to, or controlled by another's emotional expression, i.e. they need to discern the intent of the emotional one? Is that the reason for FETI access? No. It's not the reason for FETI access. It's because of this, uh, and I keep saying this over and over again, but look at it this way. TE, and then you have TI, then you have FE, then you have FI. Okay? This is a system. You know what system that is, folks? Input process, output, feedback. Don't forget, these two functions are on an axis. These two functions are on an axis, okay? So a person can only do one of these axes within their ego. So one person is responsible for input and feedback. Another person is responsible for process and output. Okay, and that's literally all it comes down to. Kitty. No, hey. Kitty, this your bath, Kitty. Hi, Chloe. You want to come join us on the stream? Chloe the cat? No. Oh. No, Kitty, this my pot pie. <laughs> you got any, uh, you got any uh, popsicles in that freezer downstairs? Mm. <laughs> Hi. Mm. All right, next question. <laughs> next. Uh... What would an ENTP woman, a mum, with strong ISFJ integration as opposed to INTJ integration look like? And how can I turn my NI into an ally? What? So this woman is an ENTP and she's a mum and she's asking the difference between ISFJ integration and INTJ integration. And how okay. can she turn her NI into her ally? NI into LI? Into an ally, as in like some a partner to help her. 
as in alliance. Okay. Ally. Okay, that's the primary difference right there. ISFJ focused ENTP mother, they're happier. ENTP or an INTJ focused ENTP, they're more mature. That's basically the, the entire difference right there. Now, how do you make uh, NE hero versus NI uh, nemesis allies? Um, as a cognitive orbit, right? And you make them, you make them, um, you do that by being at peace with yourself in such a way where you're no longer worried about your own future. You stop worrying about your own future and just realize that as you integrate other people's futures, other people's fates into your own, you're actually a lot safer. This allows your SI inferior to be like, oh, hello guys, I'm safe feeling right now. And then as a result of like feeling safe and whatnot, uh, as a result of feeling safe in that regard, you know, the NI nemesis doesn't have to worry about its own future because NE has so many other futures of other people around it intertwined with it, such that it is symbiotic. Mm -hmm. Because if any of those people fail, then the NE hero fails. Or if any of those people right. succeed, the NE hero succeeds. That's how that works. Right, the audience is asking you to type your cat. Is that something you're willing to do? Uh, not right now. <laughs> the, the audience will have to type the cat. Okay. I'll, I'll say though that, that she is a love and, uh, and uh, let's see, very timid, very affectionate, uh, likes to lounge, um, also likes to get your attention and will headbutt you if you're not paying attention at certain critical times when the cat desires to be a pet. So. So she's initiating, huh? Yeah, she does. She does kind of initiate. Yeah, and she's very S I N E. Yeah, initiating. So. Mm -hmm. but yeah. She's a little bit informative, like she meows, and that means pat me, huh? Yeah, yeah, very informative. Okay, let's stop typing the cat, please. Okay, I, I get, I get. You literally just proved the SFJ NTP quadra, but we don't need to go further than that. Next. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, do you see an INTP being an artist versus educator versus entrepreneur? Question mark. Uh, I see an ENTJ doing that more so. Mm-hmm. And they can be entrepreneurs. I've coached many of them. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, what's that? ENTJ Shadow? Yeah. With a great deal of maturity. Next question. Yep. Why do ISTPs struggle to learn Jungian analytical psychology the most? Uh, it's because of NE trickster. Because to them, to them, it's nothing more than pseudo science, AKA vaporware. I think you need to uh, refresh your widget, by the way. Yeah, the widget's dead for like the rest of the show, just so you know. Alright. Okay, the next question. It's Could a crappy a widget. We're going to get a different one. Yeah. Could a personality disorder cause someone's personality to be mistyped? Example, INTP with dependent personality disorder being mistyped as an INFP. Actually pragmatic, but DPD causes them to seem affiliative. Do you think it's possible for a PD personality disorder to cause someone to appear to be different to be a different temperament such interaction style than they actually are uh i am not an expert in uh, personality disorders so i'm not going to answer that question so uh, i might make a guess at that i feel like if somebody does have a personality disorder it would cause a tendency for them to cognitively transition so i wouldn't say that they'd be an INTP who mistypes as an INFP, I'd say they're an INTP who seems to cognitively transition um, right. 
to an affiliative side of their mind given certain cues right now a way around that would be i guess for them to solve problems independent of people and just like without interaction see what happens like right make them come up with some sort of plan but again this is just a guess to uh, make them come up with a proposal for how to solve a problem and then like get them to right. do it entirely on their own give them the problem see what the the solution is and you should be able to determine affiliative versus uh what are you writing on the whiteboard nothing <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, sorry. I'm being a little bit loud. Okay. Why is lying not considered immoral by FI users? Why is lying? Say again. Not considered immoral by FI users. Because the ends justify the means, man. It's because, uh, okay, so here's the thing. S F I plus T E. And we're actually going to talk about my little girl for this example. Okay, so recently she just uh, did a quadra shift. That's right, folks. Quadra shifting. That's what we call it, quadra shift. She, she quadra shifted into an ENFP. So that's correct. My daughter is no longer an ISTJ. She is now an ENFP. So, yes, so I have an ENFP and INFJ uh, for a daughter and son, respectively. And it comes, and we're gonna use her as an example for an FITE axis, okay? So, TE is all about beliefs. Mm. And belief systems and references. status and guess what perception how people are perceiving them right fi is morals right all right you will never see me coming uh so wow that's like terrible when that happens okay all right cool so what does that mean so T user, because they're so focused on beliefs, you have FI, right? It's not, you know, and like, like, oh, I want to feel good about myself. I want to feel good, right? But I don't actually have to be good. And because I don't actually have to be good, as long as I look good, that's all that really matters. As long as they look good, I can feel good about myself instead of like actually being good. TE, it's all about narrative, right? all about narrative te users utilize that narrative because if people believe it's true then it's true so if others believe i am a good person then that means i am good that's literally how that works and that's why te users fit users that's how they lie and it's usually because they're lying to themselves, actually, and believing their own lies, right? Lying to themselves. And they're not aware of the truth. They're not aware of their own folly. They're not aware of it. And this is especially common with TE child and TE inferior. This is not common with TE parent or TE hero. Why? Because they have supporting TI nemesis and they have TI critic, which still demands some form of verification, right? So TE parent and hero beliefs are closer, much closer to the truth and can actually be true. Whereas TE child and TE inferior, no. No, they are way far away from the truth because they don't spend time verifying anything and have to rely on other third parties to verify their beliefs for them. 
So yeah, that's the answer to that question. Okay. Um, how does sleep deprivation affect the mind? Does it trigger a particular cognitive transition? Uh, yes, and it's usually a shadow transition. Similar right, to what would happen when you're drunk, etc. Also, guys, fix your circadian rhythm. If you do not know what circadian rhythm is, what are you doing? Sleep, please. Please sleep. Yeah, sleep the same time every night. Um, so next question. What do you think of the phrase, the bright of the light, the dark of the shadow? Uh, I think it's not true. You don't think it's true? All right, Mr. Uh, I'm awesome. Uh, please explain that to us. Well, from a physics point of view, it's not true. Okay, tell us about it. So, for example, I have a light in my room. I have one light in my room. If I turn on that light, if it, the brighter it is, the less you can see my shadow because light is bouncing off other sides of the walls and filling in the shadow space, making it harder to see the shadow. The darker that shadow is, sorry, the darker the light in the room is, the less is reflected off the wall. So that shadow behind you actually looks a lot darker. Are you making a season 17 order versus chaos argument, Mr. Jab, metaphysically speaking? I is that what you just did? Are you stating that order is light and that chaos is dark? Is that what you just did, Dab? I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Honestly, I don't know. I just tried to explain from the physics point of view using SA, but whatever. Oh, well, my Annie figured it out metaphysics-wise, so we're good to go. Next. Okay. Um... Hey, hold on. Mark your place, and then go, let's go back to the Patreon questions. All right, all right, all right. Uh, my kid, my place. Patreon. All right, what's the difference between Effie Trickster and Effie Demon? I think we just did that, but okay. Uh, Effie Trickster. Effie Demon. Awesome. Okay, so Effie Trickster. Okay. What's the difference? So Effie Trickster is unaware, but it's also actively trying to be aware. It's trying really hard to be aware uh, because don't forget it is a plus, it is a plus, which means it is an optimistic function, right? Whereas the demon is a negative function. Negative, 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 negative. That is a horrible negative. Negative. Okay, it is a negative function. And it just it's just not a priority. It is a not its priority. It's like blissful yes, blissful ignorance. This uh, malevolent. Yes, so that means I am blissfully ignorant of how of whether or not I make other people comfortable, right? So this person is blissfully ignorant and chooses. This is actively choosing to a point. It's not really actively choosing, but the demon itself is choosing ignorance. That's a willful, willfully ignorant. I wouldn't really say willful either. I mean, okay, I could make the argument, but it's not necessarily because it's not like the person consciously has a choice of stopping this. They just can't. Uh, not until they've mastered the rest of the sides of their mind, at least in terms of the demon goes. Willfully choosing to ignore the fact that other people have feelings. It's just not relevant to them. Whereas Effie Trickster is just unaware of other people having feelings. They're just, and it's trying to be aware, but it fails over and over. Uh, and it tries, and it's just not really aware. Whereas uh, the demon just really doesn't care, and as far as it's concerned, burn all the feelings. It just doesn't care. It's not a priority for it. So, but yeah, that's how I'd answer that question. Next question. How do SI tricksters cope with breakups? How do SI tricksters cope with breakups? Very easy, by performing the door slam. 
and <laughs> removing all totems. All totems or any physical objects that contain memories or reminders. And that is that question. Okay, next, next question. Next question comes from Ginger Assassin, Chase and Jab. I love you guys. My question is, where do ISTJ women hang out at? How do I approach them as an ESTP? Very easily answered. They hang out at light at the library. Yes. I was gonna say. <laughs> yes, the they also hang out at. Um, they also hang out um, uh, at the gym at times. Uh, they also do ballet. Ooh, yes, dancing. And when I say gym, I'm talking gymnastics, right? Uh, they also get into biking, uh, track and like field. Um, uh, every now and then they can do martial arts. It's not common, but it happens. Uh, and then you can also find them, like if they're an accountant, for example, they get into accounting. They also get into banking. Anything that has to do with like finance, uh, anything at all with finance, uh, research, uh, doctor, uh, yeah, nurse, uh, lawyer. ISTJ women are extremely easy to find. Extremely easy to find. Compared to INTJ women, which are very rare to find. So both have TE parent, one super common, one super rare. But I mean, I mean, I mean, INTJ women are less for now because we we just found out, folks, that uh, that Kana is now an INTJ. <laughs> so yeah. thank you for taking a hit for the team there, Kana. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I got on the super chat. How awesome. can I, an INTP, have a better relationship with the mother of my child, who is an INF, ISFJ? It's been a real bad breakup, and it's very hard to communicate. Okay. This is a very painful relationship. I don't recommend it. So T-I-N-E-S-I-F-E, -E, right? Then you have S-I-F-E, -E, and then T-I-N-E, -E, right? Okay. So explain to me how this is going to work. Well, I think this. No, I think this. Well, you feel this way about me. No, you feel this way about me. And you need to make me comfortable. No, you need to make me comfortable. Well, what do you want? I don't know what I want. What do you want? That's like literally this entire relationship. Oh, it's cancer. It's such cancer. Like literally, uh, like seriously. Cancer. Cancer. And uh, more cancer. I don't recommend it. Stay away from this cancer, folks. Do not get in relationships like this. This is absolute relationship cancer. Avoid it, divorce it, burn it, stay away. <laughs> uh, so how do you deal with that? So let's, that. let's look at it this way. Let's look at it this way. So you can have to do some good old cognitive emulation. Emulation, AKA ego hacking. So let's ego hack the ISFJ woman, shall we? All right, make her comfy at all times and place her comfort above yours, INTPs. Oh, good luck, <laughs> good luck. Um, tell her she is a great mother. Uh-huh. Yep, and give her recognition for every little thing she does. Just <laughs> super hard for SE Trickster to do. All the little things. TI, ask her always, what do you think about this? Good luck, TI hero, asking that question. <laughs> Good luck. And then make her feel wanted. I want you. And say I want over and over and over and over again. That's basic ego hacking for an ISFJ. That's what needs to happen for that to happen, uh, for to have any uh, good results there. So that's how I'd answer that question. What's next? 
Next is another super chat that just came in as soon as you answered that question. An INFP with a three wing <coughs> is described as a complete opposite. What would an INFP wing three look like? How would their beliefs and value system show up? So you're familiar with what, what's that wing stuff? Uh, it's a neogram. A neogram. A neogram. All right, what does Chase know about Enneagram? Nothing. That's the problem. No, no, that's actually not really true. Uh, the problem with Enneagram, and this is why I don't like commenting on Enneagram, uh, is that one, um, I don't know enough to comment. Uh, like I, I really don't know enough to comment on that. The other thing is, is that Enneagram, the way that I see it is that it really focuses a little too much on nurture and not enough on nature. And I, that's why I find Enneagram absolutely flawed. However, Enneagram recently seems to actually have a use and I'll be lecturing on it very soon. And it can detect potentially uh, levels of maturity slash happiness uh, or track potentially cognitive transitions, okay? That's like the only positive use of a neogram that I've actually been able to find so far. And I am reading a book uh, at, uh, that um, actually, uh, like my ex-girlfriend gave it to me uh, and uh, I've, been, I've been actually reading that. Um, and uh, looking into uh, these areas of detecting levels of maturity, happiness, or transitions. But I apologize to the super chatter. Thank you for your donation. I am not able to actually answer that question. Jab, do you have any insight that I do not have uh, to be able to potentially take a crack at that one? Okay. Well, based on what you described, you said it was like a three wing meaning that the INFP was the opposite of an INFP, I believe that's what you said. Which is another reason yeah. why the Enneagram system is extremely flawed. Now, if you were the opposite, that would imply to me... INFJ or ESTJ. You know and, what I mean? I don't know. The exact opposite would imply a shadow transition to me. So yeah. I would say that would reference an ENFJ transition. So, so this INFP say, person should probably verify if they are one of these three types then. Well, not only that, it could be that they're stuck in their shadow. Right. If they're stuck in their shadow, it would explain why they act exactly the opposite to their type. That's correct. Every cognitive function is inversed. Yeah, but if they're an INFP, they're probably like T inferior and relying on test results for and, and basing their right. entire thinking based on test results, which they should not do. Hmm. INTP yeah. seduction style. We stated this earlier. It's the natural lover. The natural mm. lover. Yes. The natural lover. Um, and. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, do you need to go into any more detail on that? Um, I am... Let's see here. List of... Uh, Natural lover. Just going to verify. I'm verifying with TI parent, so hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. Okay, the siren, the rake, the ideal lover. Um, no, the dandy, the dandy, the natural, yes. Yes, the natural. Now, I, I do see some arguments actually being made recently on some forums that I'm on that they could be considered the charmer, but natural is primary for sure. Natural is absolutely primary. Um, and uh, I, one guy tried to like make the argument that they're charismatic, but like, no, not, no, an INTP is not, but really natural <laughs> is everything. And then they can kind of use the charmer every now and then. So just as a difference. So that's how I'd answer that question. All right. 
Well, How are we doing on Patreons? Question. How many left do we got? Uh, we got like two more. One's like a half question, but it's not a real question. All right, let's do it. All right, is there ever going to be a meetup in Europe? Uh, yes, and if it is, we'll probably be doing that in London or uh, Edinburgh or um, Moscow. One of those three locations. Moscow? Although technically, I just triggered everyone in the audience and I just now realized it. The UK is not <laughs> in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry guys. Sorry guys. I mean, technically they're still part of the European Union, so. Right. I'd really like to go to uh, Barcelona. Muy bien, señores. Y también. Barcelona. Prague. Mm. Yes. I'd like to go there. I'd like to go to Venice gonna... as well. Very much so. I want to go to Greece and drink shots of olive oil. Mm, me too. It's exactly. E exactly. ESTJ seduction style, huh? ESTJ. ESTJ seduction style, um... It really, really depends. They can go charismatic. Uh, it just depends on, like, which, uh, which side they are for, um... Like which side of the mind are they focused on? Are they subconscious focused or shadow focused? Oh, there's the kitty. Um, like, uh, like I'd show everyone the kitty if she just come over here. Come here. No, no, no. Ah. No, kitty, that's your bad kitty. Yeah. <laughs> no, kitty, that's my pot pie. Wow, really? <laughs> what? You never seen South Park? Not often. No. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so, but uh, but I'm sorry. Let me finish. But the real question is, is that ESTJs go out of their way to be ideal lover. Ooh. So, yeah. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Next question. What is the INFJ seduction style? I guess everyone wants to know about seduction styles today. Apparently. They're really good at Siren, but they're also really good at Ideal Lover. Absolutely. And Ideal Lover is their primary. INFJs are Ideal Lover as well. Yep, they are. Yep. Woo! But yeah, they can mix, they can have a mixture of Siren and Ideal Lover, which is extremely powerful and very potent. Very potent. I mean, just like. Um, just like the companion in that show, uh, uh, Firefly, um, she was an INFJ, even though like in real life, she's technically ENTJ. So, so yeah. What's this? Here to wake some people up, ask about Freemasonry. <sighs> All right, what's next? Uh, for... <laughs> oh my goodness. You've got someone raiding your chat. It looks like. Um, what the INF? What are the I? Oh, sorry, we just answered that. Is it normal for an INTJ, ENTP, golden pair to be in their shadow and subconscious constantly when they are together? I feel like yes. That when I'm with my ENTP, I'm not always an INTJ. Sometimes ENTP and sometimes ESFP. For example, being informative and initiating. Same for him. Thanks. Yes, absolutely. That is a thing. Because these two types can read each other like an open book, like nothing can be really hidden. Everything is up to negotiation. Everything is challenge. There's consistent challenge amongst these two types. It's very normal for these types to, uh, um, it's very normal uh, for these two types uh, to cognitive transition or actually force each other to cognitive transition consistently. That's like very, very normal. Uh, why is that? It's because it's that, let's say TE is trying to provide input. Okay, actually let's uh, use a different color for that. Let's say TE is trying to provide uh, input and then TI is going to have to process it. 
if it's too much input, or if it's the wrong input, TI is probably gonna to have to go down to its TE down here, which will cause a cognitive transition through cognitive orbit, basically. So that's just one example. Or if FE is trying to provide so much output, if I can't handle it, so it has to go down to the FE trickster, that could cause a transition as well. So, yeah, awesome. That answers that question. I saw a super chat come in. Something about what? What was that, Jeb? It was about an ENTJ that is trying to work on anger management. Got any tips for him, sir? Yes, I do. Get a baseball bat. Okay, and then get uh, full trash cans. And when you get ragey, you beat your trash cans with said baseball bat. Yep. And I'm obviously quoting a movie when I do this. It is a movie about marriage. I recommend this movie. It's called Fireproof. Although watch out, it's like super mega Christian. But yeah, good movie, <laughs> recommend it. Uh, so how did ENTJs deal with anger management? Really, you need to stop being impulsive. And uh, why do ENTJs uh, have the problem? Um, so where does that anger actually come from? It comes from here. This is where their rage is. And remember, this is a positive function. This is a positive function. This is a negative function, negative function. And basically, if you're having a hard time raging, this basically means you are, quote, immature. Because your parent function is underdeveloped. Develop your parent function, you will gain maturity, then as a result of that, uh, you will have proper anger management. Now, how do you develop your parent function? Very easy. Just be responsible with what you want. You criticize everybody else in the world for wanting the wrong thing. Why aren't you taking the time and not being a hypocrite? Don't be a hypocrite and make sure that you are always wanting the correct things. You're, if you're really an ENTJ, then you're the one who is the most responsible with what you want, which means through that responsibility, you become less, you become less impulsive, right? So literally the answer is develop your NI parent. It's, it's, it's that simple. That's how you handle anger management as an ENTJ. Cool. Next question, Mr. Jab. Anything left to Patreon? Are we done with Patreon tonight? Yes, one more. Signs that an ENFJ is in their shadow, and why would they be in their shadow? Okay. Because they're drunk, because they're upset. Yeah, there's plenty of reasons. So let's look at the shadow. Awesome. Dreamer shadow. Well, the reason they could be in their shadow is because, check it out, folks. No one cares. No one values me. No one appreciates me. Okay. Um, I don't want to do this. Okay, and then SC is, is that uh, I can't make anyone comfortable. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or this one, uh, try uh, no one is loyal to me, okay? No one is listening to me, right? Pretty simple, right? So that's an ENFJ. If they have any one of these problems, guess what? They're gonna come down here in the shadow. It's like, well, no one cares or values me, so I have to value myself. I don't want to do this, and you know, well, because no one else wants to do this, well, they're just gonna have to want to do it because I'm not gonna do it for them. Or, you know, no one is loyal to me, so I'm gonna be loyal to myself. 
No one is listening to me, so I'm going to force everyone to listen to me, whether they like to do, it, do so or not. That's literally the difference. That's how it works, folks. What's that super chat, Jeb? What's the difference between shadow maturity and parent maturity? Uh, in order to gain any kind of maturity at all, you still have, like, the parent comes first. You have to develop your parent. But uh, if your shadow is developed, uh, it also has latent maturity itself, and you're kind of a more mature or wiser uh, person. Whereas the parent is more about responsibility, personal responsibility. That's basically the difference. So wisdom and responsibility. That's all it comes from. So equate shadow to wisdom, and then parent to responsibility, and that is the difference. Awesome. What's next? All I, right. Um, that's actually all the super chats, and that's all. Cool. The, let's uh, do YouTube questions. questions. Let's do uh, let's do uh, YouTube questions for about five minutes or so. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, let's get some YouTube questions in. All right, a plethora asked again, patron here. ESFP using my SEFI. How can I get along with others, especially if they don't like me? Tanya here. I need to load the Discord app on my phone tomorrow. I can't deny. Okay. So What's the question can again? ESFP, how can an ESFP get along with others, especially if they don't like her? Okay. Uh, make them comfy. Right? Uh, help them. Uh, be selfless. Um, hmm. uh, boost other people's status. Use that TE child to boost other people's status. Because of the FI plus TE self-importance of the ESFP, because they understand self-importance, they can use that to boost status of others, which helps instead of just boosting their own status. Awesome. That's a great question. What's next? All right, what's next? Um, um, let's see what we got. Why and how does SE use this test loyalty? Examples of tests. Why do SE users test loyalty? because they need to push people back to see if they'll come back, basically. Because they want to see how much uh, pain or how much that person can endure. It's basically endurance testing. That's really all that is. Because uh, it's like, well, if you can't endure this, then we can't be friends or we can't be in a relationship. Uh-oh. INTP trying to communicate with my ESFP girlfriend. Help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. All right, well, we can do that. That's actually a really good relationship and that is definitely a relationship I recommend for sure. Definitely, uh, definitely recommend that relationship. Okay, so uh, take a look at this. How does this relationship work? That TE is trying to eat that TI. Uh, just don't be as harsh. Watch out for that harshness of that TI. Um, this is something that even I as an ENTP need to do because I have TI parent and TI parent can also be pretty harsh. I get that a lot of NFPs or FITE users on this channel do not appreciate my harshness. I understand that I'm harsh, but I'm also understanding that no one out here has the guts to actually tell you guys the truth sometimes, even if you don't want to hear it. And there's just got to be that guy in the world that does that. And so that's my sacred duty. And that's why I tell the truth. And I kind of don't hold back with what I'm saying. Because while I am harsh, guess what? It is what you guys need to hear because that's what you need to grow and get out of your ruts, basically, right? But for the sake of this romantic relationship, watch out for that TI uh, hero harshness because that might hurt the child. So be very careful about that. Uh, make sure that uh, you are being very caring and uh, not making decisions that hurts her status and makes her feel good about herself. It's very important that you need to show her that she is valued, right? And then uh, at the same time, you need to make sure that you are demonstrating 
loyalty, 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 and consistency, right? Consistency. Wow, I can't even spell apparently, and I'm just, wow, I just kind of screwed up the screen here, but all right. That's uh, pretty good there, I guess. Um, so yeah, something to be aware of uh, in that regard. Um, allow her to want you, give, allow her to do that. Uh, and then, uh, but yeah, that's, that's base, that, those are the basics of what you have to do as an INTP uh, for that relationship. So, okay. Anything okay. else? Um, I just want to say something really quickly. I just want to point out that all social interaction is manipulation, and manipulation just has a negative con connotation. So anyone wondering, hey, um, let's explain this type so we can understand them better and so that we can get along with them better. That isn't us trying to be terrible people and screw someone and rip them off and destroy their lives. It's, hey, let's all get along and let's be happy together. Yep. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Yep. All right. So, um, yeah. Um, I think I think we're good. Questions. I think we're good. I think uh, I think the stream is over at this point, Jab. Yeah. So. Let's, see, let's see if we can get maybe one more good real question. One. One more. more one more question. One more. One, one more good real question. And none of this like. D tier trolling either. Like, come on, man. I used to be a 4chan troll. Like, you would literally get banned for 4chan from being so bad. I mean, you could, you could ban them. I mean, if you want, like. <laughs> Alright. Question. How could an INFP lose its moral principles and how it affects them? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. So, FI plus TE. How does an INFP lose their morals? Very easy, by having inaccurate beliefs. Beliefs that are inaccurate leads to immoral behavior. Be aware of that, because TE affects FI. And if your beliefs are wrong, it will lead to immoral behavior. Be very careful. Do not be fooled. Just because you believe something does not mean it's true. Don't be fooled. Because it is written. <laughs> For it is written. <laughs> it, therefore, it is written. A way seems right to a man. But in the end, it leads to death. Yeah, verify your beliefs, folks. Verify. And Marky Mark says Love Lou is an ENFJ. Absolutely. And Who the hell's Love Lou? What we'll just love? end with the Frank James. Good old Frank James. Which type is he, folks? Which type is he? Which type is he? Which type is he? See if you can find out the answer. I guarantee you it's uh it's interesting. So anyway, I that's no it for tonight. Lou love is. Love Lou. Uh, that's it for tonight, folks. Um, thank you all for uh, for coming, and uh, we'll definitely be seeing you guys uh, in a week from now. Um, although, yeah, I think our schedule may be a little bit different next week, uh, so just mm -hmm. hang in there. Uh, look for schedule changes, uh, but otherwise, unless the schedule is not changing Tuesdays and Thursday nights at 9 Eastern, we're doing these streams. Also, we have a fictional typing stream actually mm -hmm. scheduled very which, which soon. Which has nothing to do with this upcoming season of game of thrones nothing yeah it has whatsoever. nothing to do with it nothing to do with it at all so, no nope. if you are absolutely sure you don't want to know what any of the characters from game of thrones types are be sure to shop to next fictional typing because we absolutely will not be talking about what their types are like yeah, none of them i know right yep exactly and I, let, let let me just say that it probably will not be a fictional typing episode dedicated to Game of Thrones characters. Like, it probably won't be that. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And what what's my opinion on Dave's superpowers typing system? I have no opinion <laughs> because I don't know anything about it. I have no clue. 
So there you go. That answers that question. <laughs> Sorry, because I don't know anything about it. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for coming tonight, folks. Uh, also going to have the uh, Patreon Ruby conference uh, posted as well. Uh, look for that in the uh, on Patreon itself at patreon.com slash csjoseph. Otherwise, it's been fantastic having you guys here tonight, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week, or at least at the next How to Type uh, stream. And uh, hey, yeah, what's up? I was thinking this fictional Game of Thrones special episode that we're that's not, not having. Game of Thrones. Should we make that public? Uh, I mean, we could we could probably uh, we could probably look at that um, as, as a possibility for sure. So, we'll see. We will see, folks. We'll see. Otherwise, we'll just have to type Goku over and over and over again and realize the exactly. truth that he's actually the same type as George W. Bush and the SFJ. <laughs> shoot ya, shoot ya. Oh, yeah. All right. And in the broadcast, folks, have a good night. Later. Later, Gator.